Hi, my name is Stacy, and I'm with Full Day Preschool, and I'm here to talk to you about math. In our program, we have children who range from age two to five, and that's a wide range of developmental levels. So we have children who are just learning to speak and just learning to say the names of numbers, and then to start putting them in order where they're rote counting and just naming all of the numbers in order, all the way through children who are counting one-to-one -one correspondence and, and putting a value on the number, a quantity on the number, and moving all the way through to the kindergarten age where they're doing um, early addition and subitizing. The thing we want to remember is that children learn through play. So we want to make sure that we are doing things that are fun and that we limit the amount of time spent on an activity so that there's no stress involved. And we don't want you to be stressed out because if you're stressed out, the children will be stressed out. And if your children are stressed out, they're going to resist the activity and resent doing um, any form of math, and we don't want that. So let me talk to you a little bit about materials that we might have at home that you can use. Um, a lot of people will use whiteboards um, and dry erase boards, and you may not have that in your home. Instead, you may have, I have a Dollar Tree frame, and it's just a glass or plexi, um, plexiglass or regular glass $1 frame, and it works the same as a whiteboard. So. If you have dry erase markers, you write directly on it and you use your, your um, eraser or a rag and you can wipe off any marker. If you're using um, washable regular children's markers, that works on here as well, but you'll have to use a spray bottle of water just to get it off because it's, it's a wet erase rather than a dry erase. Um, so either way, you can do it however you want to do it and you have the board. Um, how I do things is I have a math box and I collect materials when I happen to see them around the house that would be good for counting. So for me, I have 10 Q-tips and I have 10 water, uh, the containers from my vitamin waters. They're just empty. They're non-toxic, but the kids can play with them. And so we count them. Uh, I have hair bands or bottle caps, whatever it is that you want to use in your math box and you can add your little dish of, of items, cotton balls, and you put them together and they're in a math box and they're ready when it's time to do math. That way there's something exciting and the kids get to use it at that time of the day and it's all prepared and you're not having to think about it. it is to keep things in perspective, think about the traffic signal. There are games that you can do with math, and you can do them all day long, uh, any time of the day, any waiting activity, any transition time, any time you want to um, just bring in a song, you can do math throughout the day. Yellow represents things that you're intentionally doing. You're planning them. They could be... Um, Activities like counting the number of chicken nuggets that you have or making a hopscotch outside where you draw with chalk with boxes with numbers and the kids jump in order. Um, little activities that you can do outside with that. And then the red one is, is, a ma is your math box. You pull out your math box and it's a sit-down you are the one who is intentionally planning the activity. You thought about it in advance. It's only going to be a five or 10 minute activity. You're not going to sit down for a long time, but you're not going to do it all the time. If you feel like you have to have a math box and you have to sit down and do this once or twice a day, every day, it will become stressful for you and for your child. So I put it in this order because there are things that you can do all day throughout the day just to add math in throughout the day. There are things that you can do, um, intentional activities that are just part of your day, part of your meal. And then there are things you can do that are a little bit more, um, specific and meant to pull your child into the next developmental level to help strengthen their skills at a sit down, very intentional time um, of play with math.
So for green, I have number songs. And for number songs, you can do anything from just singing um, one, two, buckle my shoe, uh, through the five little monkeys jumping on the bed, or just pulling out YouTube and searching number songs and learning number songs along with your child. They can be, you can sing these songs in the car. You can sing these songs while you're getting ready for bed, while you're brushing your teeth, while you're waiting for your turn to use the restroom, but you can just sing these songs all the time. And it's helping with those beginning levels of math rote counting. It's helping get, um, the rope counting going where you can go higher and higher. So the younger kids are stretching and reaching for reaching the number five and reaching the number 10. And the older children are reaching beyond 20 to 30 and 50 and towards a hundred. And the more songs you do, and there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of songs on YouTube, and you can pick songs that you like the tune, that your children like the tune, fun songs, so that it doesn't feel like a forced activity. And you can do them throughout the day, any time of the day. Then the yellow one are the number, the number games. And those are the ones that take a little bit more thinking, a little bit more planning, but still they're just games that are happening. They're not happening at a specific time of the day where we come sit down and we, and we do math together. These are just activities that you've kind of snuck math in. It's a jumping activity outside and you're jumping through the hopscotch or you're counting how many jumps to get to the stop sign at your corner. How long will it take to, how many, how many counts can you count to before you, the light turns green? Those kind of activities that will help move children into the next level and they won't even realize that they're learning. And then I have my math box. My math box is the one I was talking about that has games in it, has materials in it. It's there for you to use and to pull things out. And I want to show you a few of the things in my math box. So I just have an old shoe box. I could have a number line so that when you're counting, you're asking, you're asking questions like, how many do you think I have? How many do you think this is? That's a prediction and you want to use the word prediction. How many do you think it is? And then test the prediction. Oh, you think it's nine? You think it's going to be right here at nine? All right, let's line them up. And so you'll sit on the table and they'll line them up. Oh, you only have six. We were so close. We were three away. Those kind of activities, prediction, just use a number line. If you have dominoes or Legos that you can add to your math box, Children can look at this and they can count them. At a younger level, we're just counting them. One, two, three. At a little bit older level, they'll be able to subitize, which just means they know that's two. They've counted one, two so many times, they know that's a two. And so you can say, oh, what's two, they, you know, what's this number? Two plus this number, one. Oh, what's two plus one? And then they'll count one, two, three. There's different ways you can use it. If you're working with older children, you could have them multiply each side. So if you're working with a little bit younger child, they can roll it and you can say, what, what number do you think that is? And ask a prediction question. What number do you predict it is? Okay, let's test that and see. And then we count it together. One, two, three, four. That's practicing and modeling one-to-one -one correspondence. I touch one dot while... I say the number one, two, three, four, and then we show it's four. I wonder what a seven would look like and then try that and you can use your whiteboard for that. For these activities, I used my whiteboard, which is really just a frame from the Dollar Tree, and I'm, I put down how you can use um, writing. We need to put math as writing. Yes, we're going to sing it. We're going to talk it. We're going to jump it. We're going to count it. We're going to predict it. We're going to test our predictions, but we also need to have it written down so we can basically look at the data. So in the green light section, so this would be songs. You might want to write down which songs you're going to sing in the morning. They can go through the YouTube channel. You can pick which songs you're going to do and make a list. You can draw 
This one is supposed to say 10 little fingers. You don't have to be an artist. So they can sing 10 little fingers today and five little monkeys and one to buckle my shoe. That's what we're going to sing today. And that would be some, that this is an example of what you would do anytime. All of these songs can be sung throughout the day and you can pick which songs you're going to sing. And every time there's a transition, you can stop and sing one of the songs that you had listed. Or here's an example of a yellow activity. Uh, going on a nature walk. We're going to go on a nature walk and ahead of time ask, what is it we're going to see? And, and write down what it is you're going to see, what you think you're going to see, prediction. And then when you're out walking with your masks on, you're going to count how many. And maybe you carry around um, some paper, some scratch board, and you can tally it while you're walking or you can wait till you come back, or each person in the group can be watching for a different item. Um, your daughter could be looking for trees and counting. You could be looking for stop signs, and we can see, you know, you could be choosing to look for buses or slug bugs or whatever it is that interests your child. If you want to look for bugs or cats or dogs, whatever is an interest, and count them while you're walking. That's an example of an activity that's planned but yet it's not go sit down and work in your math box. It's something different to do. And then here is a, an example of a red activity. And I drew a domino. So you can, if it's an older child, you can be working with adding the two sides, um, putting it here. You can do the, the counting activity like I talked about where you're predicting with the dice. Those are activities that you're going to do while sitting at the table and putting it an intentional time of the day. You're sort of stretching your child's um, attention span, coming up with ways to, to stay at the table, stay at the activity for more than three minutes. And then maybe the next week, more than five minutes, but not very long. And if it gets stressful to sit down, you need to end the activity so that you don't get stressed out and they don't get stressed out. Cause we don't want either one of you to want to resist or to resent, um, doing math together because math is something that happens all day, every day. And we don't want children to be lost with math so young. And to show you that this really does just wipe off, you can just wipe it off. And it, it's, it's just like a dry erase board. An example of something you can do with your magnet board, um, this is a really good one-to-one -one correspondence because each post it, each sticker, whatever you use, each square is one number and it's younger children will count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And they're not really doing one-to-one -one correspondence. We need to count one, two, three, just the stickers is a one-to-one -one correspondence. But now if we do a prediction question and say, how many do you think we have? Oh, 200. All right, well, let's count. Let's try it. Let's, let's test that prediction and then count how many. One, and try to encourage them to stay in order because remember numbers are important in order. Two, and then you can count how many you had. Um, there's different ways, whatever magnet you have at your house, but it's just another way and another thing that the kids can use. If they're interested in cooking, if they're interested in um, helping in the kitchen, use materials from the kitchen. If they're more interested in gardening or things outdoors, use things from the gardening. Um, if they like cars, just use cars for everything. You can learn math um, with cars and you can write numbers on stickers and turn every car into a race car. But now they're saying, who, which, which car is going to win? Car number two or car number eight? And now they're starting to identify numbers and they're putting it with something that they're interested in which would be the cars. I hope that you realize that math is something that could be done throughout the day um, from number songs, through intentional little activities, through actual math time activities. And remember that your math box does not need to happen frequently. It can happen just a couple of times a week. And that's going to be a very good um, activity to keep children engaged and keep children thinking about math um, while they're not in school. Thank you so much for everything you're doing with your children. We miss you so much in this classroom. We hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.